What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Sonoy Valente here once again with the Mean Green Show. Today, joined by JD, we're going to kind of jump into what we think Coach Morris uh, may be in for in his first year of recruiting and getting this program not so much rebuilt, but just maybe retooled to what what he's thinking for you know his team and, and whatnot. But before we get into all of that. You already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football, G5 football, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. JD, thanks for jumping on with me again. And yeah, so just kind of jumping into the topic. So last night as we're filming, this is sat Sunday. So yesterday was the bowl game. And I was talking with Brett Vito and he brought up just, you know, there's just common sense statements but something to, to really think about is as exciting as a new coach is and it, a lot of um you know murmuring of we're going to be this and we're going to be that and it is exciting and i'm excited as a fan and i do think this is a, a really good hire i'm a fan of it and i think a lot of good things are in store down the road however realistic realistically speaking for this next season you've got to think that coach morris is walking into uh, a team that is going to a significantly better level of comfort uh, level of competition in in conference play going to the american and he's losing say what you will about i mean you, you're losing your starting quarterback who just broke the record for passing touchdowns you're losing your clutch kicker and ethan mooney Leaving, losing the general, the captain of your offensive line, Manasse Mose, You're losing the school record tackler in Katie Davis, and all of that. And you're also you're behind the eight ball because of his hiring in, in recruiting. I don't know, you know, and you'll, I'll let you kind of air out a little bit more on the recruiting side, but you, I mean, you he's it's going to be a tough slate. I mean, what he does here in the next couple of weeks will hopefully make us feel a bit better oh and not to mention we haven't seen who's jumping in the portal yet we have Marquise Gums thank God above that it seems like he's coming back so that is tremendous news I would love to see Jake Roberts come back as well but we'll see you know I mean just got to see how everything shakes out uh, on that end um, but there's a lot of talented guys on this team that may test the portal. And if that happens, that's just going to be another obstacle that coach Morse is going to have to overcome and, you, you, you know, assess the situation. But anyway, JD, just what are your thoughts there and um, what coach Morse has on his plate from a realistic standpoint? Yeah. I mean, like I said, the Americans, I definitely think it's a step up. I think, you know, teams that were at the bottom of the American would have been really close to the top of the conference USA. Uh, you know, I think top to bottom, it's a, it's a very, very tough conference. I know you're losing the Houston's UCFs, but I mean Tulane's still there. That's the reigning conference champion. Uh, SMU, we've we've seen that they're tough. I mean, and not to mention that UTSA. I mean, they're the reigning conference USA champion, so mm -hmm. they're going with you. So it's a it's going to be a, a tough conference, a tough step up. And I mean, it's not not Morris's fault. I mean, Morris has hit the ground running. I mean, the guy's making home visits. He's interviewing staff. He's having to recruit the players that are still currently on the North Texas team. Um, he's doing, you know, speaking at, at this function, at this function. I mean, the guys, I don't know if he slept since he got hired, but um, I mean, even when the hire was made, he was behind the eight ball because, you know, you'd already missed, you know, two official visit weekend, you know, national signing day is Wednesday. Um, and Morris has been a one man show. I mean, he hasn't hired, one staff member yet. And I think that's mainly because it's just horrible timing. I mean, um, you know, you, you can't really interview the North Texas staff to see who you want to keep on the current staff. Cause they're, you know, in bowl preparation, um, you know, say he brings some guys from his Washington state staff, those guys up until yesterday were in bowl preparation. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of respect for him and his former coach. So, I mean, he's not going to pull any of those guys away from, you know, Washington state's team in the middle of bowl preparation. Um, you know, so I think, you know, like I said, it's he's been behind the eight ball. I think he's going, you know, 90 to nothing and, and covering a lot of bases. But I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Wednesday if we don't, you know, only have one or two signings. 
Um, and, and depending on who jumps in the transfer portal for us, I think we'll see plenty of portal activity, uh, you know, in the, in, towards the end of December, 1st of January. But still, I mean, it's if, – if the AD position wouldn't have been open and, and you know, the, the coaching drag, you know, drug out and, you know, North Texas playing the conference championship, which set us a week back too, I mean, I think it would be – I'd be a whole lot different, but like I said, I don't I'm not going to blame that on Morris because he's doing all he can. I mean, he's he's been doing home visits with current commits and has already won. You know, I would I would count it as two big recruiting battles. I mean, Marcus Moore, the JUCO defensive tackle, it was between us and Arizona State. And Arizona State, in my opinion, has two of the best recruiters from Texas out there, and to win that recruiting battle by himself is a huge win. And then we we've been talking about Burkis Gums for. I feel like two years now, you know, he's been one of those guys that's, you know, been getting interest from, from power five schools. Um, you know, he's an all, all American freshman this year. Um, uh, he was one of the guys that we assumed was just, you know, automatically gone. Well, you know, Moore was able to, um, Morris was able to meet with him this week and, you know, Gums announced this morning that he's staying. I think that's a, that's going to be my, in my opinion, the second big recruiting victory, of the uh, Eric Morris era. So I think once he gets some staff in here, I think it will be, they'll be able to come February, put together a pretty good recruiting class, but um, it's just, uh, it's kind of a madhouse right now with, you know, all the portal. I think there's going to still be a lot of high school kids left. I think you can grab some low hanging fruit, early signing period, G fives, you know, Seth and them had a ton of success just because there's, you know, power fives aren't able to do a lot of, you know, high school recruiting right now and but um i still think that the 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 names i'm hearing the type of staff that that morris is going to want to build i think it's going to be a young hungry um recruiting staff so i think kind of excited to see how the the first what he can salvage over the first recruiting class to see how it turns out yeah and this we don't even have the schedule out and we didn't talk about this pre-tape so kind of putting you on the spot here so my thought is if coach Trell, even if coach Trell stayed next season in the AAC, I think it would be a natural dip. I mean, just because again, the competition is going to be that much better. Maybe not, but I, I mean, I, I would think that that's very plausible. What are your, your thoughts for next season? What, I mean, again, we don't know who's going to be here. So this is a like way too early even to think about, but why not? I mean, what are you thinking we we go record wise with our out of conference being ACU, Louisiana Tech, and Cal? So, I think you know it's so hard, especially in the transfer portal era, because we have no clue. I mean, like you said at the beginning, you know, Ani, Minose, KD, all those guys leaving. I mean, if Morris goes out there and you know lands a Power Five center and a Power Five quarterback and a Power Five linebacker, uh, I think in the portal era we've seen. You know, you've seen the two lanes of the world go from two wins to an American Conference Championship. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities that North Texas wins the American next year. But, you know, as we sit here today, um, with the recruiting class we've got in place, I think we've got four committed currently. I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, it, you, you've got to set realistic expectations. I mean, I think that five to seven win total would be, um, you know, I think would be, I mean, if you gave me a, a, a five win total, you know, over under, I think I would take the five um, wins just because there's a lot of talent. But like you said, well, go. I mean, we don't know who's hitting the portal. I mean, if, if North Texas within the next five, 10 days has, you know, 15, 20 starters hit the portal, then, you know, you your expectations got to drop even further. Um, but as of right now, if we say everybody comes back and they don't bring any, you know, Big time portal names, I would say, you know, that five win mark would be a a pretty good first year in the American. Yeah. And um, maybe hopefully soon we can get Varkis on. I'd love to hear why he's choosing to stay and just kind of a little bit of his his story a little bit. But we'll, we'll see on that. So anyways, I mean, you know, we'll keep everyone updated with uh, the next coming days and weeks should be pretty exciting and uh, eventful seeing what Coach Morse does and. Uh, we'll be watching it with them with a magnifying glass if 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 I know JD and myself. <laughs> but and it's I mean one of the, the the things that you know it, it 
we have had so much activity in the early signing periods that the, the February signing period just kind of was a thing of the past. I remember when I first started doing this, it was February, February, February. And I really hope that uh, NCAA does something to try to change this because especially for the coaches that are fired, new coaches, it's just between bowl games and, and high school state finals and dead periods. And I mean, it's the early signing period is a, is a natural disaster. I think that if they can make it for, you know, just JUCOs or just guys that can early enroll, other than that, I think it's just it's just too much to ask for, you know, new staffs and and especially teams that are in the bowls. Like it's just too much going on all at once. To um, so moving forward, I hope NCAA does that. But like I said, this year, uh, for the first time in several years, I think the the February signing day is going to be kind of exciting and fun again. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be very exciting, and uh, yeah, can't wait to hear and see what happens. But all right, JD. Well, thanks for jumping on. Anything else we need to to go over before we end this one? That's all I got. All right. Well, as always, go mean green. Go mean green. <laughs>